Right. Uh, so Airflow loves Kubernetes, and we will tell about that with with Caxil. Uh, with, uh, Caxil, uh, introduce yourself very quickly. Thanks, thanks, Jarek. Thanks, Melina. Um, my name is Caxil. Melina already introduced us very nicely. I'm an Airflow committed PMC member and work as a manager at Airflow engineering team at Astronomer. Okay, and uh, Yarek, I'm the PMC member of Apache Airflow. Yes, uh, that's that will be it for a, for the introduction. What are we going to talk about today? Uh, we will talk about like what is why why we chose Kubernetes uh, and or why you would choose Kubernetes and why you would not choose Kubernetes. Uh, so both sides will be covered. The same with Docker containers, uh, why you would use them and why you would not use them in which situations you wouldn't use them. Uh, and then we, uh, we will tell a little bit more in detail without going very, very deeply about like Docker container image and Helm chart for Apache Airflow, something that we've both worked on uh, for years, uh, I would say. Um, and the last part is like, what's next for Airflow and Kubernetes? You will wait for that one last part and uh, uh, you, will not be, uh, you will not be disappointed, I can tell you. So why Kubernetes and containers? So Kubernetes and containers, they, they eat the world. So like Kubernetes won the war of, uh, of orchestrators of, of, of work, not workflows, but uh, machines and, and, and infrastructure. They have the promise that it has the promise that there is no operations so that it, it's super easy to manage. There is, is isolation between different components. Uh, so they are not, they don't have to be running together and clashing together with conflicts sometimes. Uh, the, there is a standard deployment model, so you can deploy it uh, whenever you want in the same way, whether it's cloud or on-premise. Uh, the prom promise of Kubernetes is that it will look the same, the deployment of your application in there. And finally, last but not least, and something that Caxi will tell more about, it's like you have this standard packaging and standard installation mechanism, which is Helm chart, which is a really great way of standardizing the installation, something like apt for installing Linux applications, the same here. Uh, why not Kubernetes? Why you would like not to choose Kubernetes? You, you might not choose Kubernetes because it's complex. It is, uh, and the, it's it's hard to debug for any newcomers. If you have never used Kubernetes before, there is a big or steep learning curve, uh, and that was also mentioned in one of the previous talks with the medical records that there, it was very difficult to learn how to how to operate it. It's also, uh, as I used to call it, this leaky abstraction, uh, which means that. Uh, it's like you cannot focus just on Kubernetes. If you want to run your application, you have to know Kubernetes, you have to know Docker, you have to know Helm chart, you have to know the application application you are running, and sometimes even you have to know how networking works under the hood uh, in order to operate. So, so this knowledge is big that you have to uh, have to possess. So it will not remove you from knowing all the lower layers, but it will add some complexity on top, but it's worth it in general if you operate at scale. And it's not very easy to lock for, for local development. So some, there are easier ways to deploy uh, Airflow and develop Airflow and, and test this, this development. And what is the Airflow approach with Kubernetes? Uh, as we started uh, the talk, Airflow loves Kubernetes. We recognize that Kubernetes is really the, the uh, operating model for, uh, for, for deploying applications. However, we are not. We are also not uh, native Kubernetes, or Kubernetes native, or Kubernetes only. There are, there are many ways how you can deploy Airflow, and we deliberately keep those options. So there are some other workflow uh, systems which are using Kubernetes only solution. Uh, you, everything you deploy is a Docker container or pod in Kubernetes. Full stop. There is no option. In Airflow, it's not the case. You can use Docker Compose or Docker Swarm. You can swarm. You can use container services of different kinds at clouds. You can use virtual machines to run Airflow. You can run on premises. You can use managed services like Astronomer Composer or NWAA. Or and there are many other ways of uh, deploying uh, Airflow. And as you see, this is the, res this, the survey result from 2020. How people are using it. Kubernetes is part of it, but not the biggest part uh, even. Uh, so we chose to support Kubernetes because it's important, but it's not the only thing supported by Airflow, not the only deployment mechanism. Few words about the Docker container images. I had a, a very detailed talk last year about uh, container uh, Docker images for Airflow, so I will not repeat all the details here. No time for that. Watch that talk 
not much change since then. But uh, why we're using Docker containers and why you would use Docker containers? Because it can package your software and your dependencies together. You can also share those images, uh, which uh, you can use elsewhere. So you can build it in one place and use it in many other places. And this is nice because you have a, like a binary version of your application that you can reuse across all the deployments. There is isolation between components, that, something that Kubernetes uses uh, exactly. I, I told about this before. It, uh, the Docker image is like a mutable and easy deployable building block that is used by Kubernetes. So it's kind of very crucial to use the images in Kubernetes uh, and other deployments mechanisms because Kubernetes is only one that uses images. But it's, it's, it's crucial that you have this like one block that you just install and it works. And, the, and you, don't, you don't worry about, you know, adding new dependencies. So you, you just have the ready solution there. Uh, then there are also a lot of images which are ready to use uh, that are uh, provided at the Docker registry. Uh, but also, it's super easy and extremely easy to build your own images. You just have to be, uh, break the barrier. Or, okay, I don't want to build images. I just want to use them. No, just build images because it's super easy. And this is something we want to also convince you during this talk. Uh, and there are all the different deployment op options, Kubernetes Hunt, Docker Compose, Swarm, and many, many others. And, and this is standardized. This is an open standard, which a lot of, no, it's not only Docker that implements it. There are other ways how you can build containers and deploy containers, which do not involve Docker, because it's an OCI standard, Open con Container in Initiative. Why you would not use containers, honestly, I don't know. This is this is the this is the thing. So you really need to learn the basics. That's the only thing. It's not very complex. There is a, a very nice video. Uh, we, we will share this uh, presentation later, so you can to, uh, look there from VMware about containers one on one, how it works. And there are absolutely no other reasons why you shouldn't start using containers when you, you are thinking about your production deployment. They are they solve so many problems that I simply cannot imagine how people still are not using containers for their production deployment. You can use them for local, uh, you can use something else like installing up Airflow uh, locally on your local machine or for development, that's fine. But for deployment in production, use containers in a way that is good for you, like Docker Compose or Kubernetes or, or other ways, but containers are there, use them. That's it. So uh, also I, I mentioned before that uh, you can you can uh, build your own images and you can very easily extend images. Some examples I will not go into details of them. Of them, the crucial point is the VI, VI Vim part. So like this is like installing as additional dependency. I added Vim, uh, and that was that was wrong actually. Kaxi pointed me out there, yeah? but I love Vim. I'm, I'm you know like VI uh, old old school developers as you see. I have no hair, so I'll, uh, you know I have VI in my vein in my veins. So yeah, I always use VI and uh, always install VI. Uh, but you can very easily build your own dependencies, add your own dependencies, uh, and then you can uh, build the image by simple command. That's it. That's pretty much it, how you extend the image. You can also, and this is something that I've built, and the, this talk from last year's summit, just watch it because it, it has all the details, is the way how you can actually build your own very, very customized image if you want to really add some custom stuff. And I'll not go into details, very simple, one comment, that's pretty much it. But summarizing the what happens in a year, I had this presentation a year ago, and we are now, we still have image, yeah? but it has matured since a lot. Like it supports Kubernetes and supports quick start Docker Compose out of the box for Airflow. It is enterprise ready. Uh, like the image is automatically verified when we are building it. It's like tests are like tests are running for the image actually. So this is like what? Like people don't run tests for images. Why? I mean we do. Uh, there, uh, thanks Camille Bregua for introducing that by the way. Uh, then we have uh, OpenShift compatible way or like it, this image is prepared to be installed on OpenShift which has some specific requirements. We have uh, Customizable installation sources. So if you, if you have your own PyPy packages uh, in your own registry, you can install them. You can build your image using our provided solution. It's, it's ready for that. And you can build it in restricted environments. One of our customers, uh, I don't know uh, which service, which, uh, which special, special services they were working on, but they have to build uh, Airflow somewhere in a, in a vault hidden without any connectivity. And our Docker image 
allow that as well. So we are really ready to support the number of cases, but we also support the development of of this uh, of airflow uh, in an easy way. So it's also development friendly. In the, it's very easy to, to inspect and debug the airflow using this image. It is prepared for that. You can just enter the image without any problems and test it. And we also added some features which allows for quick testing, like adding admin user automatically, upgrading DB or installing packages, which make your development workflow much faster and iterations much faster. And one thing about the last thing, the last part, which is the installing packages, I wanted to stress that spe specifically because people don't really get the, uh, the traps that they can get into. So it's very convenient. Uh, so like we are, we are treating our user really seriously in terms of like uh, security, stability is so important. Convenience is just uh, is very important as well, but it's not as important as security and stability. And there is an example, like in our images, we've added recently a development options for adding additional requirements without actually rebuilding the image, which, because it's convenient for, for the users to run the Helm chart, add the dependencies on the flight, and they are happy with that, which, should never ever be used in production because it's super dangerous. First of all, it's as slow as the container restarts, but that's a small thing. But the bigger thing is that you are installing stuff from the internet while you are restarting your containers, and that's super dangerous. Somebody can simply remove the packets from PyPy and make your whole installation breaks. Like the the whole thing, the whole installation of Airflow will stop working suddenly. Suddenly, at some point of time, you don't know when. You don't control that. Somebody else controls that. This is bad. So this is one of the practices that we care about, and we introduce that. You can use Docker Hub to find Docker images. You can use Artifact Hub to find, install, and publish uh, Helm packages. Here is an example screenshot of Artifact Hub. Like it, it already shows some popular chats, like Prometheus and the official Airflow chat. So now that you know what Helm is, let's go to Helm chat. Helm chat is nothing but just a collection of YAML template files which are organized into a specific directory structure as shown in the slide. Um, the templates directory is for template files which will become Kubernetes manifest. So when Helm evaluates a chat, it will send all the files in this templates directory uh, through the template rendering engine. It then collects the results of those templates and sends them onto Kubernetes. And chat.yaml just contains some metadata information about the chat. Values.yaml contains all those information that you could override. And it's very simple. Uh, and it, the powerful Helm template language is very powerful. It also uses some Go uh, templating functions, but it's very powerful. Now, now that aside, let's talk about actual topic, Airflow Helm chat. Let's talk about the state of the Airflow Helm chat a year ago. If you wanted to install Airflow using Helm, you had several options. We had like the chat from Astronomer. Uh, we had a chat from Bitnami. We had the user community chat, which was previously under Helm stable repo, which is now deprecated. On the one hand, this is great, right? Uh, because at least there, there are solutions out there that you could use uh, and it's better than no chat. Uh, but on the other hand, you now need to figure out which one to pick. Good luck figuring out which chat is better. Uh, you might even need to look into the source code uh, to make sure that it contains all the features you need. And of course, to make sure that it does not have any bugs and everything. But like I said, it was still a good that the charts are there. So first of all, a big thank you to all the maintainers and contributors of all these charts. A special mention to Gatin and Matthew, who are the maintainers of the user community chat, which was, again, I would mention uh, previously in the Helm stable repo, because the other two charts were maintained by companies, by Bitnavi and Astronomer, while this was maintained by individuals. And it is time consuming. Uh, we know that. Uh, Matthew also hosted the Melbourne block of the Airflow Summit this morning. So thank you, Matthew. There was a problem, however, that we wanted to make sure we address. Each chart, each of the three popular charts I mentioned had their own limitations and certain features were not too good for production or let's say didn't follow best practices. Uh, and unfortunately, some of these charts had little to no testing. I don't blame them, of course. There are other, there are lots of like Helm charts that have no testing, but we do not want to follow those practices. So there was a need for an official Apache Airflow Helm chart. 
Last year in 2020, uh, an updated version of Astronomer's Airflow Helm Chart was donated to the Airflow project. We wanted to make sure though, that before we use that donated version and release it, uh, we wanted to make sure that we have some criteria that are fulfilled. Some of those are listed here, like we wanted to review all the features, add missing features or fix broken features and review all the architectural and logical decisions that were made in that chart, testing and stability. Like Eric mentioned for Docker images, this is very important for us. We wanted to make sure we have a good test coverage and it's stable enough that we discover bugs quickly. Licenses and integrity, these charts will be used by thousands of companies who care about source code licenses. And we, we know how important this is. So we wanted to make sure we fix those things if there are any issues. And lastly, the documentation. This is a priority order, I, uh, you can say. Finally, last year, once Airflow 2.0 was released in December 2020, and we all know you love Airflow 2, we spent a good time on the chart to fulfill all the above criteria and released it this year on 16th May. And that became the official Apache Airflow Helm chart. So now let's talk about that. Let me make it clear. This is the chart created by the community and for the community. The sole purpose was to remove the confusion for the users that which chart they should use. This is the single chart hopefully they should be using from now on. We had incorporated a lot of feedback from the users. Just like Code Airflow, there were a lot of contributions the community members um, added before we finally released this chart. So it was not like Astronomer donated this chart and we released it uh, after some modifications. There were a lot of contributions from the community members improving it according to the best practices of Helm and whatnot, and we released it. So let's talk about those incredible features now. All executors are supported, whether it is local executor, salary executor, Kubernetes executor, salary Kubernetes executor. It is also compatible with both 110X and 2.0. Both Postgres and MySQL databases are supported if you want to use it locally. Of course, for production, we recommend you use the managed versions of the database. Do not use um, databases in containers. Auto scaling for salary workers using Keda. For Postgres, we also ship with PG Pouncer with the battle tested configurations for managing database connections and for monitoring StatsD, Flower, and many things. There, this is another important feature. It's like automatic database migration. DB migrations are handled automatically when upgrading to a newer Airflow version. Built in support for Kerberos. Changing executor just does not require any additional step, unless if you want to increase the number of workers or not, that's a different uh, matter altogether. But it's just a matter of changing the executor config. That's it. A lot of options for deck deployment. Git sync, persistence volume, baked in Docker images. And there are a lot more features. Like We have listed that on our talk site. If I start talking about each of these features, I think we'll finish our time. So those are listed on our talk site. So make sure you take a look at them. Now, I said the main intention of this chart was to make sure that this is the only chart that the user should be using and to avoid all the confusion. So I'll give you enough reasons on why you should be using the official Apache Airflow Helm chart. The main reason is it is official. <laughs> it is official Helm chart for a reason, right? Use it. We know what we are trying to do. We know we are trying to do the best for you. So use that. It is built by the community and for the community, it is maintained by the same people that maintain and develop core Airflow. The code lives in the same repo as Airflow. It lives in GitHub Apache Airflow under the charts directory. And each merged Airflow commit runs Helm chart test. So you can be rest assured that the chart does not break. It uses the official Docker image that Jarek explained. Since the chart was donated by Astronomer and the chart were used by already hundreds and thousands of customers, the configurations are already enterprise ready and battle tested. Like the PG bouncer configurations, uh, the stats D and all those are already tested and used in production by many companies. We have a great test coverage. We have both unit tests as well as integration tests. We have created, thanks to Camille again uh, and Daniel Imberman who wrote uh, the Python unit testing framework for health chart. Because it lives with Airflow code, 
it is future proof all the new core uh, airflow features will be supported by the official helm chart immediately the deferred async operator feature aip40 that andrew godwin mentioned in his presentation will require new components to be added to core airflow this will be directly supported uh, immediately supported by the helm chart so and do not worry about backwards compatibility. We follow strict server. We make sure we don't break things unless there is a need to, and we will provide a good documentation on it. We use Helm chart schema to validate values, pass to values.yaml to catch errors early. Um, not a lot of projects do that. And it feels like a small feature, but it's a really important feature. Read about it. Uh, won't be explaining in this talk. It follows the best practices for Helm, Airflow, and Python. We haven't compromised best practices for the sake of convenience. That is a very important thing. We are not going to compromise anything for convenience. The chart is supposed to be production ready. It will help you in local development as well, but we already have Docker Compose and other things for that if you want to. Official Airflow Helm chart can be used for local development as well. Works fine, but again, no compromises just for local development's convenience. The docs are versioned on the Airflow website. You will still be able to easily navigate docs for older Helm versions once new Helm chart versions are released. We have a stamp of approval from the Apache Software Foundation, like signed releases. We have li uh, handled licenses carefully. Before releasing the chart, it undergoes a three-day voting period where it needs at least three votes from PMC members before it can be released. So we test it thoroughly. We make sure all the uh, ASF guidelines are complied with. We also supply a Helm provenance file to verify the integrity and the origin of a package. That said, there are a few areas where we can improve even further. Specifically, more docs are always helpful, right? And this is a community project. Uh, let's add docs. Similar, same contribution flow like the core airflow applies here. So we'll be adding more docs. We'll need your help. We'll keep on adding more scenarios and everything to make it as easy as possible for new users to start using airflow with the Helm chart. So that being said, let's see how to use this Helm chart. It is as easy as this. Just add Airflow Helm repo using Helm repo, add Apache Airflow and the Airflow website. Create the namespace. If you can ignore that step, but then it will create in your default namespace. So create the namespace and install the chart. There's a uh, configuration you can see that set environment coload examples. That is there just so that it installs it uh, and loads it with your example deck files. So you could run example deck files and you and you are happy with that. Confirm that your pods are up. You can port forward the web server and visit the Airflow web server over there. This is this should be the sample output. Familiar familiar window, right? Um, but yeah, this this hopefully makes your life a lot lot easier. Helm upgrade is also easy. Helm upgrade will take care of upgrading your meta database, like I said earlier. Do not need to worry about anything. And last but not the least, there are some links that me and Yarek have provided for building image, for uh, using the Helm chart. They go hand in hand. So as it uses the official Airflow image, if you want to update DAX, there are multiple options. One of them is baking the DAX in the image. You could do that and push it to the Helm chart. So. What's next for Airflow and Kubernetes? I'd like to invite Jarek as well. Jarek, if you want to chime in on this one. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I think everyone is waiting for that, uh, for what's next uh, for Airflow and Kubernetes. Uh, and <laughs> that's it. So uh, as Kaxil mentioned before, like we are waiting for your input. This is a community chart by the community, for, for the community, official chart by the community, from the community. and. Whenever you have a need that this chart doesn't fulfill, we are happy to discuss and implement it in the way that we don't compromise the, the, uh, the security and stability for convenience, but in the way that will be best for, for everyone. And 
that's that's also the process of uh, of the Airflow Apache Airflow community, the or Apache community in general. That when we have an idea, when users have a need, we discuss and we find out by discussion what's the best way of addressing this need. And this is this is something. So we don't have a very firm plans right now. The plan is onboard as many customers as possible on the Helm chart, listen to them, and address their needs. This is the this is basically the plan. Exactly. Community project. We welcome any feedback on the mailing list, GitHub issues, every Slack. We are happy to hear. Time for Q&A. If that...